So now we're going to have a time for an open mic for, for us to come up and lament. And all I ask you to do when you get the microphone is to say your name and to say your lament. And then we as a people will say, God be with you. Unless Alexis wants me to do something different because I always listen to Alexis. Explain how to lament because we ain't all Christian. Oh, okay. Explain how to lament. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. So. Lament is something I don't know that you need to explain how to do because we all know how to do it. You just may not know this is what I'm saying. Okay. okay. Lament's when your heart cr cries out. Lament's when you can't make it through dinner without tears running down your face. Lament is when you're in your car and the song comes on the radio and you okay. just start slamming on all the right. steering wheel and crying. All right. Lament is when the only thing a friend needs to do is to hold your hand and let you cry. Right. Lament comes from deep down in here. It does not have to be articulate. It just has to be real. Yeah. Yeah. And so we invite you to step forward, to say your name, to say your lament, and then our response will be, God be with you. Yeah. Oh, Mama Chet. My name is Kathy Jackson, Woo. and I'm mourning for our future generation. Okay. Because soon we're not going to have one. They feel disenfranchised. They feel their only future is to be shot down in the street by these police who don't care nothing about them. Or jail. That's the only future that they have to look forward to. They feel like nobody loves them. And we, the church, and everybody in the community has to reach out to them and let them know their lives matter. Black lives matter. Okay. Amen. Amen. Just, just say um, your lament, your name, what you're sad about, so you can have as many people as possible. My name is Teresa Green. And I'm warning the flag of my time. Okay. A young man, 21 years old, was killed right here on this corner yesterday. So I please, young people, all lives matter, but black lives do matter. I'm Margaret Sullivan from Alton, Illinois, and I'm proud of it. And I'm glad I came out today. I have crime victims. I was beat up on the street. I know how it feels to be hurt. But I'm telling you, God puts his hand on your heart and you will stop killing people. Stop killing children. Thank you. God, God is with you. you. Black lives matter. My name is Derek Perkins of the Baptist Continuing Christian Church. I mourn the many congregations that have turned to worship at the expense of justice and righteousness. Amen. Too many folks are dying around us and we have turned a blind eye. It's so morning that God will forgive us as a church for not being partners and standing in solidarity with our neighbors. Okay. I'm Clifton Kenny. I turned 18 on February 13th. I'm supposed to be going to college next year. Well, next in August. It pains me to know that Michael Brown was to go to college that following Monday. He was 18 years old, just like me. I could be shot and killed in the middle of the street. Think about that. That's not normal. That shouldn't be the norm. Yes, yes. Police brutality shouldn't be the norm. Systematic oppression shouldn't be the norm. Shouldn't be the norm. Racism shouldn't be the norm. We don't live in a post-racial world. Mm -hmm. But who all thinks we live in a post-racial world? No. No? I didn't hear I don't think so. <laughs> you know, it is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. Say it with me. Everybody. It is our it duty, is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. I'm oh, sorry. My name is Cheryl Pointer, and I'm a member of Centennial Christian Church. And my heart laments for injustice everywhere. Because we serve a God who taught us about justice. So it's a wonderful thing to be out here among 
on so many other believers. But it's more important not just to talk the talk. It's time to walk the walk. There are prison systems going up left and right, day and night, for our young people, as young as fourth graders. It has to stop. This is a billion dollar slavery industry. Injustice must stop, and it must stop now, and it begins with us. Hi, my name is Ebony Williams. Um, I think my lament comes in where being afraid to go outside because you don't know if you're going to make it back home to your family. My lament comes in where I'm afraid for my nieces and nephews because they're not just killing us older people. They're killing four, five, and six-year-olds. They're killing one-year-olds out here. My lament is black on black crime. My, my lament is the fact that we are a nation upon a nation and we can't even come together long enough to have something. We need to build together. We need to know how to, like I said, love your neighbor. My lament come in to the fact that it only take a cup, 20 seconds, and within meeting somebody to determine that their life don't matter. When do we determine that our life actually do matter? When do we actually appreciate life? When we appreciate life, everything else gonna come together. Hi, my name is Javon J. Smith. My lament is that one month ago today, I found my sister lying in her bed dead. <clears throat> And now I'm here because I have to be superhuman. I don't get to grieve. I don't get to mourn as a black person because I'm too caught up in all of the community violence, all of the state violence, all of the things that are happening against people just because of the color of their skin, just because of their racial identity or their sexual identity or their gender identity. There are too many people out here who have to fight for their lives just because they are human. And then they have to fight for their lives again just because of something that is out of their control. So I just I just needed to say that because I am superhuman and I'm glad that you all noticed that. Okay. Can I be with the I'm on a minute, can I? My name is Bella and um my lament is that ever since Mike Brown got shot as a single mother, I feel vulnerable and weak because I have a son that's black in this country. My lament is because I want to come out and support with the live stream and bring my son means I bring a tax that I can't even have him at a daytime protest with a church that's about his future and his life without being attacked by the police or naysayers. So my lament is that they won't ever let us come together, that we can't depend on a future with another black Wall Street or a move nine because that type of hope doesn't exist in this country because that past has never really been a reality for us. Okay. So my lament is that, like you said, another person was shot here last night, that we keep fighting and that we're so programmed that they don't even have to do the work as hard as they used to because we continue to carry it on in different ways. And my lament is that we can never come together, or that we have not never come together in a way that will allow us to really reach the freedom of the promised land that we truly deserve. Yes. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping, because that's all I really have left at this point, that things can be different and that we do have a future, and to come back out here and see you guys, like I really appreciate that. So there's hope. My name is Chris Potter. I lament the legislators in Jefferson City who know we're here, they know what's happening, and still do nothing. They can't even get it together to pass Medicaid expansion to save people without health insurance from dying. They can't pass anything to hold police accountable. I pray that they will understand the problems that people are facing and truly represent them in Jefferson City, because right now they do not represent the people. I have one more after the My name is Amir Brady, and I'm, I, I like to speak about the bill that uh, Pastor Pierce took to Jeff City last Monday. And to piggyback off of what the gentleman just said, the representatives don't have, those who have our best interests at heart, they don't have enough votes 
on the floor to be able to make some of the bills that they're advocating pass. And they're being laughed at. And they're reaching out for help. They ask that we come to Jeff City with these protests and make those who are uncomfortable, who are making deals with lobbyists behind the curtains. Then we bring some attention to that. We bring some attention to Jeff City where, where these police officers, they follow law. Those people make law. Okay, At the right, end of the right, day, right. we've been going about it wrong. Let's get these legislators to do their job. And at the end of the day, if they break the law, then they go to jail. All right. yeah. We're going about it wrong. Let's get the people who are not looking out for the best interests of the community, let's replace them with some of us. Some of us who know what it feels like to be on the other side. They don't know what it feels like to be on the other side. Their families don't. When they get pulled over, they call their father, who's a, who's a police officer. We know how it go. They don't experience what we experience. Are their friends? Are their friends? So at the end of the day, let's make them feel what we feel, and let's at some point get things together, and so we all can feel like they feel. Two more. Two more. Go ahead. I'll let you eat. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, hi, my name is Rhonda Aldridge. And I stand here lamenting because I took my, my son, who is 22 years old. Him and his four friends is on the road headed to Atlanta. And I have been crying because I had to coach them about driving through all those highways with five black lives in a car for 10 hours to make it to my sister so that they could celebrate Easter. So I will lament until all five of them lives make it back to college on Monday morning. All right. So um, my name is Alexis. Um, I'm lamenting, um, not for the majority, um, but I'm lamenting for the fact that I fight for the majority and I'm suffering myself. Um, I lost my dad a few years ago, and I feel like I'm the reason I killed him. I feel like he's, I feel like I feel like he's, I'm the reason he died, but I fight for Black life every day because they died. So I'm lamenting for that. Um, because it sucks when you feel like, you know, the people you hold close to your heart you can't save. And you fight for the people who aren't close to your heart, but because they look like you. So. Uh, my name is Rashane Aldridge. Uh, before I begin, I'm going to continue to do what I've been doing. I'm making a comfortable uncomfortable. Yes. But I, I came across a quote one time that says, you must love your enemies. And I think for a lot of young people, that has been hard for us to be over, you know, before Ferguson. But I lament that one day, not just in Ferguson, not just in St. Louis, but this nation, honestly, quit looking at individuals who are darker skinned, at individuals who are not raised the same, at individuals who may come from a different culture, to not be so judgmental. I pray that one day that we can actually live in a place where no one judges us. And I'm not trying to go back to the Dr. Martin Luther King, but I pray really that the police, the ones who, who believe that we are demons, the ones who believe that within 28 seconds they're not sure if they should shoot us because we may have a gun in a car, what they've seen on TV, that you guys do not go off of that and you look at us as a human, you look at us as if we were your child. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, before, and before you go and judge us, pray. Yes. Pray. Because God will tell you that we are no different from you. We're just a darker skin tone, like a little different music and clothes. But at the end of the day, we are no different. So please quit judging us. Quit killing us. Yes, we have to quit killing ourselves. But the difference is when we do it, we are held accountable. Mm -hmm. It's not the same way on the other end, so please just yeah. please us.
morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I recognize that we are here because we have much pain. Yes. And we are here because it's holy week. Yes. I also recognize that everyone here is not of the Christian faith. I am, and I will speak from that experience. But I want to honor the fact that at the core of every faith belief is love. Yes. And I can only speak from my experience, but I don't want to, in my experience, overshadow or silence someone else. Yes. So I acknowledge that we may not all be Christian, and if this isn't your story, then listen to it as a story. Because the love that's present yes. is present in every faith and in those who have not claimed any faith. Ooh. So it's Saturday. And in the Christian story, this is the day between Good Friday, the crucifixion, and resurrection morning. And in the black church, it's the one day when black preachers are usually quiet. <laughs> so I'm making an exception today. That's right. Because we're worth it. Yes. We must remember that when we celebrate Easter every year, we celebrate it as those who know how the story ends. We celebrate it as those who have the privilege of knowing that it's going to work out all right. But back then, they didn't know. They were living in real time, and the outcome was unsure. They were living in the in-between, in between death and new life, in between persecution and praise, in between helplessness and hope. What do you do when you are forced to live in between? In between what is and what is not yet. How appropriate that we should gather at this place to reclaim Holy Week. We are gathered literally in the gap. We are standing at another gap between life and death. Between persecution and praise between helplessness and hope. The Del Mar divide in and of itself is the space in between. There is an 18 year gap in life expectancy between the north side of Del Mar. Are you feeling me? Yes. On one side of the gap, the life expectancy is 18 years longer than on the other side of Del Mar. Right. That's the, that's the, truth. the poverty yeah. line. 54% yeah. uh -huh. of those living on one side of the gap live in poverty. But when you cross Del Mar, only 7% yes. live in poverty. On this side of Del Mar, the median income for a family is $15,000. On the other side, it's $90,000. This is the space between good education and bad education, between adequate health care and inadequate health care. This is the space between your house being worth something and eminent domain. Yeah. This is the space. And we heard the sisters say that in this space, someone was killed just yesterday. Yeah. In this space, when Clifton Kenny says he's going to college, we all applaud because we know that's a miracle in and of itself. Right, 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 right. In many ways, my friends, our, re our region has been living in the space in between since August 9th. The space between death 
And I mean Mike Brown, but not just Mike Brown. For many, many lives have been lost since August 9th. And I mean the literal loss of life, but not just the literal loss of life. Because we have experienced death of life as we knew it. Death of our comfort zone. Death of relationships. Folk we thought we could trust and now we know we can't. People who don't talk to us anymore because we say black lives matter. Death of a whole lot of things. And we're trying to figure it out. We must remember to tell the story. And remember that we are here without the privilege of knowing how it ends. At the time of crucifixion, people were not sure. And so I asked myself, what does this space call for? What is required of those who find themselves living in the space in between? And I offer three things for us. I offer it from the viewpoint of women. Because the truth is, in the Christian story, if you wanted to get from crucifixion to resurrection, you had to follow the women. So the first thing is that we must be present. During the ugliness of persecution, most people left. But there were some who stayed at the foot of the cross. There were those who were present during every cruel act. Those who were present during every unjust deed. There were some who stayed even though it tore their heart out. Some who stayed in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the tears. They stayed. And they bore witness to what was true. In times of distress. We must not run. We have to be present. Secondly, we must be prepared. The Bible says that Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, after the crucifixion, they went to buy spices and ointment in order to prepare to preserve the body of Jesus. They prepared themselves to serve. The in-between time is not a time of idleness, my friends. But each of us must prepare to serve. And we prepare in different ways. Yes, there is a front line in the battle of protest. But there's a front line in the boardroom. There's a front line in schools. There are front lines in our neighborhoods. You find your front line and stand on it. And we must learn to honor everybody's front line. Prepare to serve. And lastly, we must be purposeful. The women went to the tomb with a plan. Let me say that again. Yes, they had purpose, but they had a plan. And you know what? Their plan didn't make sense to the folk who were around them. That's why they were by themselves. And that might be true of our plan as well. It doesn't have to make sense to folk who don't understand. But we do have to have a plan. Even when folks doubted them, they moved anyway. They executed their plan. And here's the good thing. When they executed their plan, they recognized when they arrived at the tomb that resurrection had already happened. What I want you to remember is that it's easy for us to get caught in this place in between and forget that new life is coming. Forget that all of this will not be in vain. Forget that even though you may not be able to see it right now, that resurrection will happen. So what were the signs of new life? The stone was rolled away. And how has the stone been rolled away in St. Louis? 
every media outlet in the world has come to Ferguson. The stone has been rolled away. The tomb was empty. Well, we're still working on that. <laughs> but we've had a start. The DOJ has finally acknowledged that death did occur. Positions are being vacated. That's right. And lastly, there was an angel standing by. Uh -huh. And I am honored to stand here because you, my friends, are the angels. You are the angels of Ferguson who stand with the message to remind us that new life is possible. Keep fighting, not fighting one another, but us fighting together, all on our front line in the space in between. Thank you. So I reminded you that Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated when he was in Memphis working for sanitation workers who were trying to get a living wage and a union. And that struggle is still ongoing in this city. Rashid is going to tell us about an opportunity um, on the 15th related to that. As he's coming, I just want to affirm Michelle's message that we've come today together to mourn. And in the process, one of the processes of grieving is that we get mad. And we've been mad today, and that's okay also. But we do need to move in a direction with our anger. And we have been moving, but we need to keep in the direction of change in the society, not going back to a future that never existed or adjusted that, that never existed, but imagining with these young leaders a future that we have yet to arrive at or hardly even imagine. But we have to move even in our grieving, even in our anger. We can't just aim them at the police. We also need to aim them in directions of hope um, and construction. So Rashid, tell us about uh, Show Me 15. Thank you. Let me also start by saying I love y'all. Uh, love you too. Love you too, Mr. Rashid. Come up on the podium. Come up, yeah, OK. OK, getting up there. I'm a little taller now. Um, so as he stated, um, Martin Luther King, that we kn the struggle always continues. We fight this struggle now. Uh, it comes in different shapes and different sizes. It never goes away. It just gets a little smaller as we continue to fight. Uh, 47 years ago, when Martin Luther King was assassinated, he was fighting. He was fighting with sanitation workers to get a fair wage and the right to have respect on the jobs. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to live to see those sanitation workers actually get that fair wage and get that union, but it happened. And Martin Luther King fought for them and the sanitation workers, what was very unique, actually came two weeks ago when fast food workers had a south, a southern convention uh, down in Atlanta, Georgia at the church that Martin Luther King used to preach at. The sanitation workers, along with healthcare workers, along with Walmart workers, along with a lot of other low wage workers all across the state, all came together and said that, that we are going on strike August, not August, April 4, 4.15. We're going on strike on 4.15. Show Me 15 is a group of fast food workers that have been standing up for the last two years, mainly fast food workers, but now it has, str it has stretched because we know Unfortunately, these low-wage jobs that are in our community are just not fast food. It's these retails, it's the Walmarts, it's the corner stores. And it's not right that people have to live on these wages. It's not right because people cannot live on these wages. It's not right because McDonald's is making rec record profit while we continue to work 38 hours because they're not going to give you 40 hours because that's full time to make ends meet, trying to make ends meet. McDonald's is making profit out the butt and not paying their workers nothing. Let me take that back, April 1st. April Fool's was a few days ago. McDonald's came out and gave 90 workers, only corporate stores, a dollar raise. 
a dollar raise after two years of continuing to push for 15 in the union. This is how the corporations look at us. And the only way we're going to get it is we fight back. So we ask asking for everyone, one, to pull out your phone so y'all can also stand with not just me, but other fast food workers that will continue to fight for a livable wage and the right to uh, unionize on these jobs because we need it. It's not, it's, you cannot survive off $7. You cannot survive off seven fifty. You can't survive off 8 $15 is a livable wage. And we're working in these jobs and getting treated very hard. We need a union to protect us. So everybody pull out your phones. Pull it out, pull it out. I know y'all got it if it ain't dead. Y'all been on Twitter. So I want everyone to text 6, text show me 15 to, that's all one word, show me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, give it to us again. Show me number 1526. Four, three, three, six. Give it to us one more time. I'm trying to guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> show me 15. Show, me. show, show me. 15. Then one five. Uh -huh. Text that to six, four, three, three, six. And then text is going to let you know um, on 415 where we're actually going to be because we don't want to let the stores know where we're going when we shut it down. And we don't want to you know, let them know over there either where we're going to be because they're trying to shut it down before we shut it down. Uh, <laughs> but this uh, text alert is going to let you know where the action is going to be. And also after uh, 415, the day after that, we are also asking people to walk these workers back into work. I remember when I was a fast food worker, that was the most important thing was somebody actually walked me back into work to make sure that my job was there. The community there standing with me to make sure that I actually have a job. Mike right there walking me into Jimmy John. It goes a long way and it goes a really long way for these workers that are trying to fight for their rights. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Is Michelle here? No, I think we should end with we shall overcome. Let's do uh, Wade in the Water. Okay. But uh, Daniel's got a beautiful voice. But I would like, excuse me for this uh, particular invitation, but I would like a uh, black woman to lead us. In. You know, I met God and she's black. Okay. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble. troubled water, enter into it. Don't turn away from it. Enter into your mourning. Enter into your madness. And enter into the place that God is calling you to move for justice. We can't stay here. Freedom is not behind. We haven't reached us. Freedom is ahead. It will be costly. Move forward. Move into the water. And God bless you. Wait, hold on. Before y'all leave, um, hold on. Can we do something real quick? You bet. Hey, Kim. Mackenzie. Mackenzie and Alice, can y'all come in for a second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know your side of chat? Huh? You know your side of chat? It is our duty to fight for our freedom. You know that? She tapped. Okay. Ready? Hey, you know what? Listen to this officer. All right, you ready? Do it together. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win.
to win. We must love and support each other. We must love and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love and support each other. We must love and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Okay, you ready to go get your diaper changed? Bye -bye. All right, you guys, I'm going to shut down the stream. I got to go change a diaper and fill up his bottle and all those those things that mommy did. Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm like, he had momentum. He was going. Say hi. Say hi, Yichi. I need a 